Well, congratulations. You have completed your six blocks and you're ready now to put the blocks together and then add the inner border and the outer border. My blocks are off to the side and we'll put those together shortly, but I wanna to get to your inner border and your outer border. Now in your kit, of course, you have those ready to go. Um, be sure to go to the download if you need to know how much you'll be needing of each of those. That's the Shabby Fabrics homepage. Click on the free download. So let's start with our inner border. We have one and a half inch strips. We're going to cut one and a half inch strips and we'll need four of those, one for each side of the quilt. You'll be sewing those into the quilt, so you'll be losing a quarter inch on the left and a quarter inch on the right of each of those strips. So they'll finish at one inch. We haven't really talked about finished and unfinished measurements before, but it's now time to do that. This inner border finishes at one inches. Therefore, the strips need to be cut to one and a half because there's the quarter inch seam on either side. This is why your blocks should measure 12 and a half inches unfinished and we'll measure 12 inches finished when they're sewn into the quilt. So up until now, uh, if you've been uh, using the kit that we've offered as, the, as part of the Learn to Quilt series, you haven't had a much fabric in your kit, if any at all, that was salvage to fold to salvage. And so I want to address that with you right now, that when you get your fabric, I like to bring the salvages up and I kind of just adjust them. And I want you to see this, how you can get this cattywampus. I could lay this on and somehow make a one and a half inch strip. But what I do is a matter of habit. I've pressed my fabric, of course, and I don't generally add sizing to my inner borders. I kind of let the fabric just be. I kind of line those up until I have that natural, it just hangs naturally. I like to have the selvage away from me and the fold toward me. So I'm dealing with one edge and not two. I line that up parallel with one of the lines on my mat to just get started. And I'll, I'm gonna make sure I kind of come over just a little bit. And I like to clean up my fabric. I do that every single time when I'm getting ready to cut my borders. With something so narrow as one and a half inches, it really needs to be cut very accurately because you'll notice any kind of variance um, when it's sewn into the quilt. So I'll go ahead and clean up that edge with one long motion and I'll peel that away. Now that I've established a nice clean edge, I will transition to the ruler and I will be looking for the one and a half inch. So I've got my one and then in between, so my one and two is my one and a half. And I will just be lying that down right along the edge to create my one and a half inch strips. Long, smooth, continuous push with the rotary cutter and simply set that aside. And of course I would cut uh, three more of my inner borders and set them aside for now. You will do the same um, with regard to salvage to salvage, finding that sweet spot where the fabric just hangs naturally. Again, establishing your horizontal line. One thing that I, I we didn't cover a whole lot of earlier on is pre-washing. You know, as you're getting ready now, you're, you're going to be excited and ready to go start making more quilts, um, is pre-washing fabric. I generally don't pre-wash fabric, um, but if somebody gave me a bunch of pre-washed fabric, which of course is a wonderful gift, I would then, any other fabrics I added to that, I would pre-wash them. So typically, if you're going to make a quilt, I recommend either all the fabrics are not washed or all the fabrics are washed. And if there's a fabric that you think might be there may be a dye issue, there may be something running as far as color. Obviously, you're gonna to wanna to check that fabric, wash that fabric before you use it in a quilt. Um, again, with your outer borders, we're going to establish a nice clean edge. And for the outer border, she'll be cutting those to four inches and you'll need four of those. I'll go ahead and find my four inches on my ruler, making sure I'm lined up beautifully, top to bottom. And I'll go ahead and cut 
those four inch strips and you're going to do three more to give you a total of four. Now we would have that off to the side and sometimes I don't even cut my inner border or outer border until I've put the blocks together. So that's, that's your preference. Some people like to cut everything all up front. Um, I typically, when it's time to put the inner, cut the inner borders, I cut the inner borders. When it's time to put the outer borders on, I cut them at that time. Um, that way too, I'm not, where did I put that outer border? Where did I put that inner border while I'm putting my blocks together? Love this ruler. The Notions kit that I've offered right in the very beginning of this series was a great beginning set of Notions that is really all that you would probably ever need. You've seen me use a spinning mat. You've seen me now use a 12 and a half inch ruler where this is a beautiful thing to take a quick, a quick check of, do I have, is my block 12 and a half inches? Let's say that my block was a little bit more than 12 and a half inches. What's wonderful about this is I can set that in the middle of my block because of the crosshairs and I can square up my block. Or let's say that you had a block and a plain piece of fabric and another block. You can simply get whatever that fabric is, lay this ruler on there, cut and cut around all four sides. Lovely ruler to have. Again, it's a bonus. It's not a must have. It's, an, it's a pretty cool ruler to have. Let's lay out our blocks. So we have, this is one of the most exciting things, the whole thing, all the work you've been doing, all the practice is now going to pay off because you're going to have a beautiful quilt to display or give as a gift. And I'm just gonna double check. I have everything oriented properly. Make sure uh, that you're referring to the image of the final quilt to make sure your blocks are laid out exactly the way you want to. Have I sewn blocks together wrong in previous Quilts, absolutely. Did I seam rip them? Begrudgingly, yes, because I thought, I know how this layout goes. So lay out your quilt blocks, as you would suspect, right sides together and simply pin, pin well. Pin in this corner and that corner and multiple times between. So the quarter inch seam allowance and press toward the orange block. Same here, right side together, press toward the yellow and for the bottom row, you'll be pressing toward the blue. That will create the interlocking blocks. Now I'm gonna go off camera, sew those together. So we have our quilt top portion, our center portion, and then we'll start adding inner borders to that. I'll see you soon. So the quilt blocks are sewn together, and as I mentioned, the top row is pressed to the right, the middle row pressed to the left, bottom row pressed to the right, and consequently, it doesn't, there was nothing magical to help us decide right, left, right. We just need to do one row, one direction, and the next row, the opposite. So we do have those interlocking seams like we've seen all along when we've been putting our different blocks together. Um, consequently, when we were sewing this block to this block, this one didn't really wanna press necessarily, and we, and we use a little bit of sizing to help encourage it to go to the direction that we wanted to. So the sizing is not only helpful putting the blocks together, sometimes when you're trying to press seams to lay nice and flat, um, sometimes just a little bit of sizing to kind of help encourage as well. I also trimmed off the threads. So we're ready to go. I like to, as a matter of habit, sew my side inner borders on first followed by the top and bottom borders. And I follow suit with the outer border. I like to start with my side outer borders and then my top um, borders. And you can always tell, you probably might not be able to see it because of the, where the seam allowance is, but that's exactly what we did here. And you can probably see this. This seam going this way means the side borders went on first and the top border. That's just a matter of, of habit that I have. Um, Rather than me cutting my inner border strips to the exact length of the side of my quilt, which some quilters like to do, what I um, have a habit of doing, and especially is great for a beginner quilter, is I will simply take the width of fabric cut, making sure that I never use the seam allowance. That is a cut away, throw away, unless you're gonna do a really fun project with seam allowances. Um, that's typically a piece that I discard. Now at this point, I will simply 
have that be above where I'm going to start. And I want to check and make sure that my inner border strip runs at least the length of my side, and it does. So I will go ahead and just start somewhere with my strip up above. And I would simply pin all the way down periodically just so that that inner border strip is running right along the very edge of my blocks all the way down. And you'll sew that with a quarter inch seam allowance. Um, any type of intersection that you want to make sure stays open or lying in a certain direction, you might want to put a pin there. So there can be some strategy to where you put the pins rather than just pinning you know every three or four inches or every six inches so if there's anything like right there's another one that i want to make sure that seam stays pressed open and i sew my borders on slowly because there are a lot of seams and they're underneath i can't see them so i often stop and i often check to make sure that seam is lying where i want it to be and the seam doesn't get flipped so Let's just pin a couple more times. Let's take that to the sewing machine. We'll sew the inner border onto the right-hand side of the quilt, and we simply uh, will repeat that with the left. But let's go do this now. Let me put one more pin down here. A couple, two more pins. that over here we go I'm going to remember my magnetic pin cushion finally it only took me six blocks and about and a border to remember to bring my magnetic pin cushion with me over to the sewing machine now you can see I'm gonna actually move the sewing machine over a little bit here you've got the drag of the quilt it wants to pull down for that reason, sometimes I will accordion, accordion the project so that it's not dragging down so much. Um, you begin, you kind of have management. You have to how to manage all of the fabric. So let's line that back up. I'm gonna put a pin in that. It wants to come apart right there. So I'm just going to start sewing and then it'll pick up. And we'll just keep going all the way till we're complete with that side. Our inner border is now on and as we would expect we're going to set that seam so let's go ahead and do that remember that in the very beginning in the very beginning we talked about pressing vertically versus this way across your body this very much applies here as well in fact I'm gonna flip this real quick let's flip that that way we can I'm going to probably set that seam and begin moving that seam because by the time I get up here, this whole area has cooled down, right? So with a longer strip, I might even just trim some of this away real quick so it's out of my way. And we'll square that up in a little while. This just helps get a little bit out of my way. So I'm going to heat that up, press with my fingers. Okay, can I work another area out here? And same, I'm just gonna kind of keep working it. So you get the idea and I'll keep going all the way up. As you can see, it's a lot more challenging working with a pieced quilt now, a fully pieced quilt top, and this is a small quilt. Think about a queen size, king size, it takes some, it takes some table space to pull that off because it's just a lot of fabric all together versus um, when it's all sewn together. 
So you can see it's just working it till everything is nice and smooth. And once, you're, once you believe it's all nice and pressed, at that point, I will take my quilt, turning it to the side, and I will take my long ruler and my rotary cutter, and I'm gonna lay my ruler so that it's on my quilt block. I have a, a nice established, what you don't want is to have your ruler just down here. Use your ruler as your guide that you are running right along that quilt top. I'm running right along that quilt top and I'm gonna trim that fabric to be even with the quilt. And I will repeat that step down here. I'll probably even turn it away from me this way. I think I like that even better. Again, I have my ruler establishing. I'm running right along the top of my block, right along the top of my block, and I trim to be even with the quilt. That's what we mean by trim to be even with the quilt. Now I'll go ahead and sew the inner border onto the right side of the quilt, press to be even with the quilt. Then we simply take a third strip and we will sew that across the top, trim to be even with the quilt, and the bottom, same, that strip, trim to be even with the quilt, and we, we keep going. The outer border is applied the same way. Start with the, the right hand side of the quilt or the left side, doesn't matter, sew that on, and consequently, I recommend pressing toward the inner border, just like I did here. So once we're gonna come back, we'll have our quilt top assembled with our inner border and outer borders on. You're just gonna keep doing what I've done. Um, and when we come back, then we'll talk about actually finishing the quilt top. Now that it has its borders on, now what do you do? So I'll be back with the borders on and we'll take you to the next step. Well, you've got your quilt all put together. You have your blocks and your inner border and outer border sewn on. But how do we now get the backing on, get the quilt thing quilted? What do we do now? And what's quilted? Didn't we just quilt? The process of layering the top with the batting, with the backing, and sandwiching that all together and sewing either a design that highlights the geometry of the blocks or kind of a swirl pattern. It's called quilting. It's all <laughs> the key word, quilt. And it's, it's funny how you, you sew together your blocks to make a quilt and then you take it to be quilted. And that's what we're talking about. So once your quilt is done, you'll need batting. I typically use Warm and Natural, or they also make a product called Warm and White, and that's what I have with me today. When I have quilt blocks that are accented with white, I like to use the Warm and White because it just makes the white pop off, keeping in mind that the, the batting is going to come in direct contact behind the actual quilt. So let's actually lay this out. I don't know how much you'll be able to see, but hopefully a lot of it. Keep in mind that your batting and your backing fabric are all larger than your quilt top by several inches on each side. And that is just how quilts are made. So you, you won't cut your, your batting and your backing to this exact size. You have this buffer, this margin, and this is how you will layer it just like that. And of course, behind that, and this is part of your kit. Keep in mind the batting is not part of your kit. It's, it's, it's really fluffy. People have different preferences for um, batting. I do recommend if you want a, if you want your quilt to, to lie fairly flat, like ours done using a 100% cotton batting, no matter what brand it is. If you want a fluffier, what's called loft, you would use a poly, cotton blend and it starts getting really poofy like a comforter. So this is your backing fabric. If you did buy the Learn to Quilt quilt kit, um, this will be your backing fabric. 
Now, please note that because we want that to be on the outside, let's actually move this out of the way. That will go down first, right side down. Actually, we're going to turn it this way, aren't we? Right side down. Of course, you would press that um, fold out of it. Then comes the batting. So you're making a quilt sandwich right now. Then comes your batting and then your quilt top. So it's all going to layer like this. All like that. Hard to manage on such a small table. I typically, when I pin my quilts together, if I'm ever gonna quilt something myself, I just do it on my floor. Um, so you see how it's layered. So you, at this point, would have the choice of quilting this yourself. And again, quilting is when you're actually sewing everything together. There's things like called stitching in the ditch. That's a process where you literally are just, all of those seams, you're putting uh, stitches in there, or you're going to maybe your local quilt shop, or maybe a friend has a long arm quilter. You have an idea of a design. You would give them all three pieces along with maybe a design in mind, and they would then uh, go ahead and add the stitching so that this is all one unit. Sometimes when you get your quilt back, if you do send it out for long arm quilting, they will have squared this up and trimmed away the excess batting and backing. Sometimes they won't. So you wanna check with your quilter to see what they want to do, how they typically, my particular quilter that we send our quilts to, when I get my quilt tops back, she has already trimmed away this so it's ready to accept binding. Now binding is of course the edge here. Those strips will be cut to two and a half inches and um, we have a whole series recorded at the end of this video on different binding options. So rather than me going into the details of that, just be sure to watch the binding tutorial and you'll be able to finish up your quilt. So I hope you've enjoyed learning how to make accurate uh, pieced quilt blocks. And if you're interested in learning more about the other aspect of quilting, which is applique, we also have a multi-part series also available on YouTube and you can watch the applique series and get going on that avenue of quilting, which is also exciting. So please give me a thumbs up if you've learned something, if you've had fun, subscribe to the YouTube channel. We have more DIY and more quilting videos coming to you every week.